In this episode of Fun Rover TV, you'll learn how to use Dinner Troll to rust proof your Land Rover, whether it's a Series 1 or a Defender, you'll be able to protect your vehicle for many years to come. If you haven't already seen our introductory video, go ahead and check that out because it really does help you understand why Land Rovers rust and are very prone to corrosion and exactly what you can do about it using the Dinner Troll product range to protect your vehicle. Step 1. Pressure wash your Land Rover. We want clean bodywork here so that we can apply masking tape and masking paper to avoid overspray later. Then work on the chassis box sections, apply the lands to any holes that you can see and then flush them through so you can see here water's coming out nice and clear, that's we want what we want all the way around. Concentrate on any cavity you can find and also things like these rear tub strengtheners, those become hard packed with mud. The rear cross member has large cutouts directly behind the rear wheels and that allows spray, salt, debris, mud to gather and collect inside the cross member. So flush that out because we don't want that to corrode, it's a very annoying job to have to replace that so we'll protect it by cleaning it first. Don't forget too the sides of the chassis box sections and the top surfaces. Work your way around the chassis and don't forget the dumb irons at the front those are dipped into the water whenever you're wading or fording and are prone to rust. Step 2. You need to steam clean the underside of your Land Rover. We were fortunate enough to have use of a local haulage company steam cleaning ramps and steam cleaner. Look in your yellow pages for vehicle steam cleaners, engine valeters or fleet wash slash pre-MOT cleaning centres. You can also hire steam cleaners by the day. Getting the vehicle up onto the ramps like we have here really helps you inspect the general condition of the components and the chassis. As you can see it is quite rusty, nothing too bad but just have a look and also take a note of anywhere that you can spray directly with the steam cleaner. So for example the alternator and electrical components you want to avoid directly blasting those. Go ahead and set the steam cleaner to between 100 and 150 degrees using a traffic film detergent to strip away grease, oils, fuel, anything that might interfere with the application of dinner troll. Steam cleaning is very messy so make sure you wear waterproof coveralls, goggles to protect your skin and eyes and you need to work methodically around the chassis so as not to miss anywhere moving logically from each section to section however works best for you but make sure you concentrate on the box sections and cavities in particular those are the areas where rust will form because salts and moisture can collect and build up make sure you get every component of the vehicle that you can steam clean the wheels anywhere you can do different angles to avoid missing any areas and just take your time so that you hit every possible component crevice crack and seam We'll let the traffic remover sit for about 5 minutes just to eat into any stubborn areas. The chassis and underpinnings look a lot cleaner now, it's a lot darker and we've removed dust that was there. But then after the 5 minutes you need to wash off the detergent with just steam. Not forgetting again the, the chassis cavities because those might have soap and foam or detergent inside. So again take your time, be patient and do a thorough job. We then need to leave the vehicle for a few days to dry out, even in summer this can take 4-5 to five days for the chassis rails to fully dry internally and that could be even longer if the air is humid or colder. I think we left ours for 4 days in the end with the heater on in the workshop. Now that the chassis is clean let's have a look where it's actually like underneath all that mud and dust. Well it looks okay, there's surface rust, some of the welds have started to rust very slightly but nothing too heavy. But if you do find anything that's structural you'll need to remove the metal, replace it with sound metal and then anti-rust prime it and paint it. It's now time to start preparing the Land Rover for spraying with Dinner Troll. Start by putting the Land Rover on a level surface and following the vehicle's owner manual to safely jack up your vehicle. You can also view our video here if you're unsure of how to do this. After removing the wheels you need to support your vehicle safely on four axle stands. We're using TUV high quality approved stands that are rated for three tons per pair. 
Now remove the bumper. This is to give us better access to the dumb irons and allow us to rust proof underneath the fixings. So it's secured with these four M10 120mm bolts through the dumb irons into captive nuts. Place this to one side as you may need to treat rust inside the bumper later on. Also remove the front jacking point rubber plug. Next we'll remove the side lights and indicators as we'll be spraying around the headlights. So those are affixed with two posi screws per lens and the headlight surround also has two front facing screws just to the side of the headlight. Disconnect the electrical connector and then once you've done that you can go ahead and remove the grill surrounds and you want to do that on both sides. The front grille is attached with eight screws based around the outer edge so we need to undo those and remove the grille placing that to one side. And at this stage, if you have any heavy flaky corrosion, this can be removed with a wire brush, a screwdriver, or a wire cup. However, the rust conversion products we're about to use require some oxidization on the surface to react with and encapsulate. So complete rust removal is not necessary. We're also gonna use an airline just to blow off any flakes of rust generated from wire brushing. And it will help remove any traces of mud or sand that might still remain and any traces of moisture. You can see here, even after all that pressure washing and steam cleaning we did, there were still some areas of hard packed mud around the bodywork. Now we're going to mask off the lower half of the Land Rover. So we're just using some masking paper, a masking tape. This really does save you a lot of time later on. There's basically no cleanup, so it's well worth doing. You can spend a couple of seconds masking off something like the door handle, whereas you could probably spend five minutes trying to clean it off. So it's just worth going around doing a thorough job. Now we can spray Dinatrol right up to the edges of the masking tape, we'll get a very crisp edge and a nice finish. For safety reasons, place a large bag over the brake calipers and discs, and you can cut that anywhere you need to to fit it snugly against the swivel hubs and the brake disc shield. You can also use gaffer tape to tape it down and achieve a really good seal. For intricate items such as the exhaust and engine, you can use tin foil just to mask that off. We'll be using a high temperature Dinatrol product to corrosion protect this later on, but that'll be in another video, so just mask that off for now from the tip to the catalytic converter. To make cleanup a little bit easier later on, put a tarp underneath the vehicle. Using Dinatrol RC800, we can now dress any surface rust. Decant the milky emulsion into a cup and brush on over areas of rust. RC800, when freshly applied, is the same colour as it is in the bottle, but the colour darkens to a deeper blue hue before finally curing to a hard black satin finish. When it's cured, it's actually formed an impermeable barrier to oxygen and moisture and it seals out any further corrosion and it converts rust to a stable organic iron compound. Now we can use Dinatrol RC900 to convert rust inside the chassis cavities. Dinatrol RC900 penetrates around 7 to 10 times deeper into rust spores than ordinary rust converter products. We can use this on any corroded surface. Make sure to fit your respirator mask and rubber gloves. Also, attach the spray lance and can gun, which takes away the strain of using a spray can for extended periods. Then, we'll follow the Dinatrol instructions and work our way around the chassis holes in order. Spray in all directions in each hole, and this will ensure full coverage. Also, work on the inside of chassis rails in the holes that are down the side of there to ensure a complete coating. Feed the lance into the holes, then squeeze the trigger as you withdraw at a consistent speed, and that's going to give you a very even and full coating inside. Once the RC800 and 900 products have cured, we can then apply ML penetrating cavity wax. If the ambient air temperature is low, then you'll need to warm the can in a bucket of warm water. This wax is designed to creep and flow into the smallest of cracks, welds and seams, further protecting the chassis. Dinatrol will supply you with a very full and thorough application instruction guide. 
make sure to familiarize yourself with the process work each step in order to ensure that you really do cover every area you can both internally and externally and also mark holes that need a rubber bung placing in them the spraying process can get messy so to protect our clothes and skin we'll put on a disposable spray suit and shoe protectors also smearing vaseline on the exposed parts of our face will reduce the time that we have to spend in the shower later on and we'll be wearing a breathing respirator throughout and the hood that we have on the coveralls that'll stop wax from getting in our hair making it all matted together also cover other areas of your exposed skin such as your hands with some gloves if you need to adapt the underbody coating gun then you might have to fit a bayonet or air coupling to it so make sure you apply ptfe tape in the direction of tightening for the attachment piece this creates an airtight seal once the ptfe has been wound around the thread just screw on the bayonet or quick coupler and tighten the assembly with a spanner. To prepare the ML can, remove the cap, pull the tab seal and then pierce the foil seal inside with the pickup from the underbody gun. You need to then tighten down the gun to the can before cinching the hole up using those two thumb lobes on the can. You need to set the operating pressure from the compressor between 4 and 6 bar to higher pressure setting can cause the can to deform or burst to lower setting and the product will not spray correctly. Then attach your airline. You'll need to remove this nozzle piece as well and replace it with the cavity lance which has a four-way spray pattern as seen here. Then work your way around the vehicle paying attention to each hole in the box section and any cavities. Feed the lance into the hole and then squeeze the trigger whilst withdrawing working in all directions from each hole. This will give you a good coating of ML cavity wax internally. So as you see here, we've applied the wax forward of this hole. We'll now repeat and apply to the rear. Continue your way around the chassis following the order set out in the instructions. Make sure not to miss any areas as this will develop into a weak spot in the protection. You'll use quite a number of ML product cans. This is normal. The rear cross member is particularly vulnerable to rust, so get a good coating inside. Then apply a thin layer of ML3125 to the external surfaces of the chassis and the underbody of the vehicle just to really prepare it for the final application of 4941 underbody wax. ML3125 forms a slightly opaque brown coating. Finally, we'll apply 4941 underbody wax, which forms a hard, black, waxy film. This protects the layer of ML wax underneath and provides a nice factory finish. Use an aerosol for any touching in you need to do after removing the axle stands or masking. Check your air pressure, then using a different underbody gun with the standard spray nozzle, apply 4941 wax over the general area of the vehicle. Avoid the prop shafts so as not to unbalance them. Dinatrol 4941 wax cures to make the underside of the Land Rover look brand new. The textured finish hides welds and seams and that is the final stage of protection for the chassis. Well worth the preparation, I'm sure you'll agree. Once the coats of wax have cured, we can remove our masking. As you can see here, there's a very little cleanup and the edges are nice and crisp. We 
Remove the bags added to the calipers and tin foil from the exhaust. For any areas of overspray, you can use 7225 Auto Cleaner and either a lint free cloth or paper towels to remove it. It works very well, requires very little effort to take off, so even the worst of overspray, as we've shown here, isn't too much of a problem. Then refit your wheels, refit the bumper, grills, headlight surrounds, lights, and drop the vehicle back onto its wheels. Before applying Dinatrol products, our Defender was a little corroded generally as we showed you. Years of all season round use has resulted in light surface rust and general corrosion of components. After dinner trolling, it's like new, it looks fantastic, completely standard but also protected from rust and the elements. It's easy to achieve a professional result with Dinatrol kits that are provided by Regel and we'd highly recommend them because they really take the guesswork out of rust proofing and they offer a lot of protection. It's much more thorough and comprehensive than alternate competing products that are available. If you enjoyed this episode of Fun Rover TV, then go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. We've got plenty of other videos and so many more coming. You can also find us on the internet on our website, funrover.com. We have an online store now, so go ahead and visit that if you so wish. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can email us hello at funrover.com as well as checking us out on social media. We are at Funrover. So remember where we're going. We don't need roads. <laughs>